Hi, I'm going to look at the game from the fourth round of the Gerenke Classic. And fortunately, this game was available because all the other games were more or less a complete snooze fest. Many games were uh, drawn around move 30 with, with not much happening. Early, like opposite color bishop and games, etc. And this game was almost drawn, but the challenger for the world crown, Fabiano Carona, showed his class, his strength in this game. He had the white pieces against Arkady Nightic, and he opened with e4. Now, Nightic is currently playing for uh, Azerbaijan, but before that, he was uh, the Germany number one. He has been over 2700 on many occasions and is a very strong player and, and an uncom uncom uncompromising one. Well, that was hard. <laughs> He's an uncompromising player, so and he has some swings in his rating because uh, yeah, he can, he can play either really good or uh, or have some letdowns. So, but let's see. We have the Rue Lopez and Knight of Six going for the Berlin defense. Uh, Caron opts for a anti Berlin here with d3 and play develops with d6. Castles and now bishop d7. Sort of uh, reminiscent of a, a Steinitz defense with d6, bishop d7. White continues to develop, rook e1. Okay, not. Uh, Classical development per se, but this is usually a uh, usual move in Spanish and uh, Rui Lopez type positions. You open up the f5 f1 square for either a knight or uh, or some other piece later. Bishop to e7, c3, and white wants to prepare d4, so therefore the rook is can be useful in protecting the e pawn as well. Castles h3, rook e8. And I think we're going to more or less browse over the opening, bishop to f8, bishop g5, and now a provocative and uncompromising decision by, uh, did I say compromising or uh, whatever, I might have uh, messed up before, but he plays h6, he's ready to fight, because he plays g5, and this is very double-edged. Now, uh, taking on g5 is not an option here because black just takes back and he's already ready to play bishop g7 and white can't build enough pressure on this knight to justify sacrificing a piece so bishop g3 is uh, almost automatic and now knight e7 so black wants to bring this knight around here maybe hop into f4 at some point but he also offers the trade of the light square bishops and after the trade we see that black has to be careful about this square. And we see that Caruana is already fancying uh, a transfer of a knight to that square. And over the next couple of moves, we see just that. Knight b to d2, knight g6, knight c4, rook d8, and knight d3. So the knight transfers from uh, b1 to e3, and from there, it's ready to jump into the juicy f5 square. So the pawns don't move backwards, so g5 has left this f5 square unavailable to be defended by a black pawn. We see d5 now by, by knight did, he wants to break free a little bit <coughs> uh, in the center. Kavanaugh took on d5 and now bishop g7. Note that black can't really, uh, I'm going to change the board color, but uh, it's a bit slow for me. What's going on? What's going on here? But I can't really take here because knight g4. And we have this quadruple attack on the e5 pawn. And this knight here is eyeing the f6 square if we can dislodge this knight. So this looks like a problem for black. And therefore, uh, knight is first played bishop g7, aiming to take on d5 on the next move. Here Caruana played d4, but he could have uh, tried to hold on to the pawn with c4, but probably it's not very good 
because Black will, Black will break immediately. Okay, he's down a pawn, but he has big pressure with his pieces on a d3 pawn. And yeah, this pressure should give him his uh, fair share of the play. So instead, uh, on with d4. Knight is took, and now, rather surprisingly, Karana took with a pawn. Seems more natural to take with a piece, maybe even the queen, if if, uh, if you calculate some things there. But he took with a pawn, and from there, there followed a somewhat forcing line with uh, some exchanges. Black flecked in here, takes e1, queen takes, black regains his piece, but loses the pawn on c7. <clears throat> However, after attacking the bishop while defending it, it turns out that uh, mm, some chicken. Sorry, <laughs> black can play bishop takes d4, and Karana even somehow, you know, missed not maybe not missed it, but underestimated this move. It looks looks shaky, you know, because. This bishop is going to get into a pin here after queen d2. But black can simply pick queen d7. And leave this bishop here because he's attacking the other one. So it gains time. And after the trade. This looks very close to being uh, an equal position. Or, or drawish. And if this pawn here was back on g6. And the knights are of course somewhere else. Then black would have control of the of the f5 square, and he wouldn't have the problems that he faced in the game. But this square is available, and Carano takes full advantage of that. He plays knight to f5. Okay, this pawn is attacked, so king h7, g3, not allowing black to uh, get his knight to a juicy square. Knight to e5. Okay, g3 weakened this square. So we have a big threat now of, of a knight check here, but queen e3 is a simple answer. Probing this one as well. And now, yeah, here uh, knight did spend a lot of his remaining time on knight c4. But turns out he's getting into some practical problems here with the queen c3. Okay, first of all, there's a pin here, so b3 is potentially a threat. We also have simple checkmate threat here and knight did went for a tactical solution with queen to e5 okay now if you take here black just takes here and everything is fine and dandy but queen d3 keeps on pressure there is this annoying uh discard check but caron had to catch it here and he allows black to take on b2 and this turns out to be good for white after the calm queen c2 White now has a strong threat. He wants to play knight d4. This would be a discovered check. And what's more, from d4, the knight would block the queen from defending this knight, and white would simply take it on the next move, gaining a piece. So black has to find something. He went for queen to e1, king g2, and now queen d1. And again, looks like he's defending cleverly. There's no more discovered check. That would just be good for black because he exchanges on, on c2 if you go here or here. And the otherwise tempting queen takes b2 is met with queen d5 check. And we pick this one up. But again, Karana was up to the task. And he played queen e4. Getting out of the queen's threat and renewing the threat of a discovered attack. And here was sort of uh, the point of no return. Um, knight did could have played queen d7 when he has some chances to defend, but after queen takes a4, which he played in the game, his position is probably uh, not, uh, probably can't defend anymore. So now we have double attack, but black can defend both f7 and b2 from a2. But now a very nice and calm move. Uh, I think according to the computer, this was the only winning move. And it just shows that at times, Caruana can be really impressive in finding, sort of playing like a computer with this precision. 
and here he plays knight e3. And this is a really counterintuitive move because the knight stands quite well here on f5 and you know, we tend to want to put the knight on an outpost. But the point here, oops, the point of knight e3 is we're completely dominating this knight. So from e3, there's no knight d1 for black. If knight to d3, there's queen e4 check, we pick up the knight. Same for knight c4, there's also queen e4. So in both cases we pick up the knight. So the only uh, remaining move is knight to a4. And if we go there, then all of a sudden knight d5, we're blocking the queen here. And black has a hard time defending here. So after knight d3, he tried to play king g7, protecting the f7 pawn. But now again, after the game, Karana said, here I was trying to de decide between queen b5 and queen b4. And it turns out that's the number one and number two computer move. And it shows queen b4. Again, I think he was thinking about dominating this knight. Once again, the knight covers this one. And now if you go to d3, I have queen to d4 check, picking up the knight. So if the knight can't move, it also means that the queen is tied down to the knight as well. So these two pieces sort of don't participate in the game. And, and white is just completely dominating the black pieces. This is a very nice, uh, very nice how, uh, how Karana played this endgame. Queen b1, see the queen is still stuck, trying to defend this knight. And now calmly g4, preparing to put the knight back on f5 under better circumstances. And still with these pieces clogged up here on the queen side. King g8. That was knight f5 was coming with jack, knight f5 comes anyway. But now it's just a matter of white moving in. Queen b8 check, king h7, queen b7 threatening this pawn. And now king h8. And after king a queen to e7, knight is resigned. Uh, there's simply no defense. We have a threat of queen check here, another threat of queen check here in both cases with checkmate on g7 and a move such as king to g8 doesn't help because queen here and checkmate so there's simply no defense here after queen e7 so knight did resign so a very nice game by, by Karana who moves into the joint lead along with MVL and uh, Vidugov then we have Magnus half a point behind after an uneventful draw with MVL today. So, shaping up to be an exciting tournament. It looks like the players were a bit tired uh, after moving from Karlsruhe, judging from the number of uh, uneventful draws. But Caruana saved the day. Uh, hero of the day. So yeah, uh, I'm going to try to keep, keep coming at you with uh, videos from this tournament. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. dramatic pause while we you know put up uh, subscription and other videos oh like here I'll get this I'll get this eventually